last four weeks, this is week number five, we've been talking about the power of thinking. The title of the message has been The Kingdom of Thought. Thinking, thought, how it works in the kingdom of God and how it works in the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of the enemy, Satan himself. The most powerful tool that you have is in your thinking process. That is yes. a tool God's given you. Now you use it with your spirit if you use it right, okay? If you use it wrong, then you use it by the influence and under the influence of demonic influences. And he can saturate, he can mess with your thinking. And I've shared with you, based on Psalm 91, before I read these uh, other portions of Scripture, that, by the way, we did read Isaiah 55 a few weeks ago, but we're going to go back and just kind of pull it together. That God's Word has declared that we are not supposed to allow thoughts that are contrary to God's way of thinking. Last week I shared with you that the way we're supposed to think is based on Philippians chapter 4. So I'll give you a quick summary. Things that are honest, just, lovely, pure, worthy of praise. And I shared with you a basic filtering system that you're supposed to use before you allow a thought to have residence or territory or jurisdiction in your temple. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Your mind is part of that temple. Your soul also is encompassing the spirit that you have. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. And your soul encompasses it. Your soul being made up of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Now we've covered a lot, and I've talked to you a lot about the will and the emotions, but everything that happens in your will and happens in your emotions begins with your mind. The way you think. God wants you to use your mind. He wants you to use it the right way. Yes. He doesn't want you to be a thoughtless person. Thinking is not an evil thing. We just have to learn how to use the thought process properly. James, again, James talks about how that People fall and stumble and sin when they are drawn away of their own lust. And lust is, has to do with your thinking. What you, it begins with a C thought. And again, a reminder for you again is that when you have a thought, it's a seed. But it becomes powerful when you get it ground. Now that's true and that could be good in the kingdom of God. Because God has thoughts towards you. Alright? And as, as Isaiah, I'll go to Isaiah right now, Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than, than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now what God's trying to tell us is that the priority of thoughts in your life should always be God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. He doesn't say necessarily that your thoughts are evil thoughts in themselves, but he's saying the thoughts that I have and the thoughts that I give, my thoughts are not like yours. They're, see, and that's why it says back in the New Testament that God's able to do exceeding abundantly above what you can ask or think. Not just what you can ask, but what you can think. Because your thinking can, can, can actually limit God. I heard one minister say it this way. He says, you think of something really big that God can do for you. And whatever you can think, the Word says He can do more than that. I can do above what you can ask for. Ask of me. Amen. So you think 
that you can do something. Yeah, I can do this. I got the power to think. God says, I can do above that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so your thinking process is limited until you tap into the power of the Holy Ghost thinking. That you're influenced by the Spirit of God in your thinking. And that you let God, the Holy Ghost, work in your life in your thinking process. And that's what it goes on, says in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11, because God gives us an idea. He begins to open up this seed. He says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Now, see, he's, he's not just having thoughts, but he's thinking. Yeah. Remember, thought is a noun. Thinking is a verb. Thinking is the action. Thinking is, the, is, the, is everything beginning to work in its effect. And he says, I, I know, I know the thought that I, I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. So let's settle one thing. God is not going to put evil on you. Now that's the Old Testament. We know the New Testament, the book of James says every good gift and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights with whom who is no uh, variableness, neither any shadow of turning. That's what the Word says. God says here, I'm not thinking evil towards you. I want to give you an expected end. Yeah. Then shall you go call upon me and I, and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Why? Because then you're giving into your thought process to think like God wants you to think. Now turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 8. I've quoted this a couple of times, but I wanted to get into it. There is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Both of those laws exist. The law of the Spirit of life and the law of sin and death. Mm -hmm. The kingdom of darkness... The kingdom of light. Sickness and death, kingdom of darkness. Life and peace, kingdom of light. Right here. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemns sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Okay, here, here now is, is the thinking process. They that are after the flesh do mind. In other words, their mind is influenced that way. They that are after the flesh. You are not necessarily, and I've shared with you before, the, the process of your thinking is a choice of whether it be after the flesh or after the spirit. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. So, we have flesh thinking or we have spirit thinking. Verse 6 clarifies that. For to be carnally minded is death. <coughs> the word carnally minded means fleshly. But it actually is a graduation. <coughs> because fleshly is not, in this case, totally negative. But the fleshly can become carnal. And the carnal is that which is leaning towards what you would call being double-minded, <coughs> being unstable, as the Scripture says. So to be carnally minded is what? What does it say there? What is it what? Death. To be carnally minded is death. Now it doesn't say fleshly, but see, the fleshly minded will eventually, if they don't take control and start putting God's thoughts into their life, 
they'll experience death. Now, when I say death, I do not mean you're going to die. <laughs> we misunderstand that statement a lot of times. It could be eventually, but that's not really what it's saying. To be carnally minded is death, which means that you are separated from life. Life can't work in your behalf. Life has all of a sudden antihistamine you. You understand antihistamine? It's something that fights like a disease. Because you choose to think the wrong way, and you choose not to think the way God wants you to think, and you choose not, and eventually your speaking will declare it, because as a man, you know, out of the abundance of the heart will mouth speak it. Mm-hmm. See, speaking doesn't cause you to have the abundance of things in your heart. It's already because what's in your heart is what you've been thinking. And then eventually you'll speak it. Psalms 91 says, He that dwells in the secret place. Everybody say secret place. Secret place. What's the secret place? The secret place, listen to me very carefully, the secret place is the place where God whispers in your ear. Amen. Secrets. Come on. Oh, thank you, brother. So, the secret place. God, God, and, and this is what I love about the Holy Ghost. is that when you go and dwell in the secret place of the Most High, God whispers His thoughts, my thoughts aren't yours, mm-hmm. into your ear. <coughs> They're good thoughts. <coughs> They're thoughts of peace and life. Mm-hmm. They have an expected end. Mm-hmm. Now if that's true in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of life, how much more true is it if you follow the things of the flesh and go to another secret place, which isn't a good secret place, mm-hmm. does the enemy begin to speak to you and whisper in your ear? And I'll give you many examples in the Scripture that can show that, but I'm just going to throw some things out to you that many times, you know, something happens in your life and instead of seeking God... You're trying to figure it all out in your own flesh. No good. And the devil whispers to you. You're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> right? You got a terrible disease incurable. Yeah. I mean, you didn't even go to the doctor yet. <laughs> and you're already getting information in your mind based on the flesh. But also the devil's using that because he knows because you have walked after the things of the flesh Mm -hmm. and because you're leaning on that and you're not going into the secret place of God. He says, well, they're weak in this area. You can't tell me he doesn't know when you're not fellowshipping with the Lord. Mm -hmm. He knows it. He knows when he's he's got his little imps studying you. Right? Watch him. Oh, hey, hey, you know, that person there hasn't fellowship with God gone to the secret place for months. Give you a little report. I'm one of your imps, devil, and I'm, 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 I'm telling you, uh, this person here hasn't, hasn't fellowship, hasn't gone into the secret place of the Most High God for months. Mm. Oh, well, let's, let's plant some thoughts in them. Let's give them some thinking. Let's give them something to think about now. Let's give them some seats. Now, you have the choice, the Bible says, that you should not take any thought saying, what am I going to do now? What am I going to eat? What am I going to drink? Where was all of them going to be clothed? You know, you, the Bible says, don't take, don't take that thought, but because you're in a weak position and you aren't, haven't been listening to the whispering of God, you're not strong in the Lord and the power of His might, then all of a sudden you say, is that my thought? You think it's your thought. It's not really your thought. But then you take it as your thought. And then you begin to think about that thought. And the thinking begins. So the thought starts with the seed. 
the thinking begins, and it begins to then come forth what? Then, then, the, then the death, the process of death, this is, this is the whole thing, begins to work in your life, the seed, the bringing forth, that begins to work in your life in the negative realm. The same thing can truly happen in the spiritual realm. And a lot of people say, why do I have to hear you say all the time, Pastor? Why do you have to teach it and preach it? And we've got to get in the presence of God. We've got to do it every day, yes. every day. Every yes. day. I do my five-minute devotion. <laughs> Snack. I read my daily bread, and nothing's wrong with that stuff. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm just saying that you're somehow being influenced, even in your thinking process, that that's all you need. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. But what you really need is to get in the presence of God and do what it says in Psalms 91 and dwell in the secret place of the Most High God. Then, because you've chosen to dwell in the secret place of the Most High God, your thinking gets right and you will say of the Lord, Amen. He's my refuge, He's my God, and Him will I trust. Amen. Mm -hmm. But if you don't, you will doubt of the Lord. He's my refuge, my fortress, my God. Man, can I trust? It's the opposite, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We can actually quote the same scripture, but it's a question mark at the end of all of those instead of an exclamation. Instead of, yes, this is true. I know it. Why? Because he whispered to me. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everything's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to see it. It's going to happen soon. Amen. And you anticipate. You know it. Why? Because God just spoke to you. Well, I already know the Bible says that. See, I've read the Word. See, a lot of people know the Scripture. How many here know some Bible Scripture? Come on. Everybody should be raising your hands. How many here know John 3.16? Come on. You know something? Yeah. Quit being... See, you're already allowing your thinking to go the wrong way by not raising your hand because you know some Scripture. Right? Well, I just don't know them like you. Don't matter! Well, Pastor, you got so many memories. Doesn't matter! All you need is one smooth stone to defeat a Goliath. Amen. <laughs> yes. Just one. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. So all you need is one good scripture to defeat the enemy. Amen. To change the way you think. Mm -hmm. Just one. And you only need to start with one. Find a good one. I've given you a lot, but just pick that one. Just start with the one. And build from there. So we got to be, verse 6 is to be spiritually minded, not just carnal. To be carnally minded is what? Is death. Death, not being a physical death, eventually could lead to that. But death, in other words, what does it do? It puts you to sleep. Jesus' definition of death was sleep. Yeah. Even in the physical realm. Hey, Jesus is too late. Lazarus is dead. No, he's not sleeping. <laughs> Jesus didn't even acknowledge what some people would say, death. Oh, he, he, he must have been a Christian scientist. He's not acknowledging the truth. Oh, no. <laughs> you know? No. He was acknowledging reality. Yes. He was defining what the kingdom of God defines. See, there's two dictionaries. There's the kingdom of God dictionary, and there's the kingdom of darkness dictionary. The Kingdom of Darkness Dictionary says death, non-existent, gone. That's why it's easy for some people to accept the fact that, you know, I don't have to be saved and born again because I'm just going to die. And it's all going to be over with. And there's not going to be no lake of fire. There's not going to be no, no punishment. There's not going to be anything, you know. Woo! That's good right there. I like that thinking. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to accept that seed, right? But the kingdom of, kingdom of God has a whole different concept. Whole different definition, different dictionary. Amen. And, and kingdom of God, death, in, in the case that we're talking about right now, it has other definitions too. It's, it, it, it talks about what's referred to as a second death. Yeah. Mm. Okay, we're not going to go there right now, but y'all know what I'm talking about there. That we don't want to experience the second death. Mm. 
Okay, but but what what's going to happen is is when we look at God's reality, when Jesus, when we look at the definition of Jesus of death and sleep. So when you're spiritually minded, you got life and peace. But when you're currently minded, death or dormancy or sleep, what's happening? A sleeping spirit, not Holy Spirit, your spirit, mm -hmm. is asleep. People are most vulnerable when they're sleeping. Come on. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Amen. Somebody can break into your house, you don't even know it. Especially if you're a real sound sleeper. You know? And there's a lot of Christians, quote unquote, that are sound sleepers in the spiritual realm. And the devil can steal and come into your house and you won't even know. And he'll come in and take a lot of stuff from you and then you'll wake up and realize it's all gone. My because you're a sleeping spirit. You're dormant. Because you're carnally minded. Mm -hmm. And you don't even wo realize it until it's all gone. What happened to it all? I lost it all. How come I ain't thinking like I used to think? How come things aren't working properly? What's going on in my life? How come I'm sick all the time? How come this isn't working all the time? How come... Well, hey, maybe, maybe you've been given in to being carnally minded. I'm not saying for sure, but maybe that's a good possibility. As a matter of fact, it really leads to a great possibility in a lot of circumstances and situations. So don't be carnally minded, but be spiritually minded, because to be spiritually minded or to think like the spirit man wants you to think according to the words of God and listening to the whispering of God is, is, is what? Life and peace. God speaks intuitively into our spirit. He wants to whisper in you. He wants to speak. God, God's not going to speak real loud all the time to you. I'd like it when he'd speak loud, you know. Sometimes it'd be nice for him to just speak louder. But I gotta listen. Everybody say, listen. Listen. To listen means that you're turning your ear to hear. You want to you want to ex you want to receive what they're saying. Okay? And I've shared this example with you before. Sometimes you can be a, in a crowd and you have a lot of people talking. And then one person's trying to talk to you and they could be telling you something. And you're trying to hear somebody else on the other side of the room speak at the same time. I'm going to hear no, it's very difficult to try to hear two people at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> And then before you know it, that person that, that's right in front of your face might be saying something very important and you don't even know it. Because you're trying to hear sister so-and-so over there because she had brought up a subject that really got your interest, you know. And, and he's trying to tell you something about his situation and circumstance, but you're hearing way over there. And so, you know, all of a sudden you're all confused. Mm -hmm. I've done that before, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> going on over there. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, better on me. Right? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the way we are with God sometimes. Because the crowd, the voices, there are many voices, the Bible says, and none of them are without significance. Mm -hmm. That's what Corinthians says. Mm -hmm. But there's one voice we should be listening to. But we're trying to tune into so many other voices. Oh, listen to that. There. There. And here's God right in front of you. He's trying to talk to you. Mm. Mm. He's trying to tell you something. Hey. But you're trying to hear. What's going on over there? What's going on over there? So we got to tune in. Everybody say tune in. Tune in. Tune in to God. To mm. the Holy Ghost station. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Tune in. Amen. I hate it when people change the station when I'm listening to something. You know? yeah. I've got something really good and I was like, yeah. what did you do that for? I was listening to that. And I was listening to it, you know. Mm -hmm. The devil's good at changing your station. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He'll test you sometimes. All the time. <clears throat> that other station might just say, thus saith the Lord on it too. Oh boy. 
Mm-hmm. Hey, well, it said something about thus saith the Lord. It said something about Jesus. I know it said something about whiskey and wine, too, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he loves him like Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm not going to let you forget that one, right? <laughs> Let's go on. God speaks intuitively into your spirit. With your will, you take your mind to assist your spirit. We know by intuitively knowing, by intuition, we prove by the mind. So you, this is where your thinking comes in. Prove, what does the Bible say? Prove all things. How do I prove that? Well, by the Spirit, you pray. You go into the secret place, and then you go to the Scripture. Amen. You go to the Word of God. So, the com- combination of number one, how many here know sometimes you didn't really know something as far as having the answer in the Scripture to something, but on the inside of you, intuitively, God would speak to you, and it, it wasn't like a loud voice or anything. Don't feel right. Not right, but something. Uh-uh. Just it's called what I call refer to as checking your spirit. Yes. And then I usually, with, without saying a whole lot to an individual, when they say something, I say, you know, I'm gonna have to check that out. Yes. <laughs> because I already have a check in here. Now I'm gonna check out the check. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? That's I'm right. I'm gonna check out the check. I'm going to go search the scriptures. Yes. I'm going to go pray before God. Sometimes, and you know, sometimes I'll search the scriptures. Won't find anything. Then I pray. They always do things backwards, don't they? <laughs> and then God will tell me what the scripture is. I hate it when I fumble around for hours looking for something that I'm trying to find the scripture. Then I finally go and pray, and I do it the right way, and I pray, and God gives me the scripture. And oh, thank you, Lord. He said, well, why didn't you come here first? Yeah. I would have whispered it in your ear. But you know, that's kind of the way we like to do things sometimes. We run to, you know, the, the, the dictionary first before we run to the writer of the dictionary. Uh-huh. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm talking about the Kingdom of God dictionary, amen? Yes. And then when we, I mean, isn't it great? I mean, if you could, do you know somebody that knows where everything is? You know, well, I want it. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and there's truth to that, isn't there? Right. Because yeah. if you just go to the right source, then you don't have to spend an hour looking for your keys. Right. Amen. <laughs> 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 We always call that GPS the great power of the Spirit, right? Yeah, yeah, man. <laughs> but we, we know, we know, we know that God is, 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 is working and He sets examples just in the natural realm even to show us, see, listen, I, I, I got ways to, to help you out. You don't have to lean on to your own understanding. Don't lean on to your own. You know what Proverbs chapter 3 says? Lean not on to thine own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. acknowledge. Everybody say acknowledge. Acknowledge. It's amazing. When we acknowledge God, what God will do? We've got Brother Todd here. And we go back. He, he, he reminded me of a story I actually forgot the time that he shot a deer. And... Uh, we looked for it, couldn't find it. And just before bed that night, I said, Lord, you know where that deer is. And I went to sleep and I had a dream. And the Lord showed me right where the deer was. I had a, you know, I'm walking through this little tunnel and this, this, this bridge, like, or it was like a tunnel, a funnel, a funnel area.